Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in. Uh, we're so honored to have you on our Sunday service broadcast, Kingdom Nation Ministries. To those who joined a little bit later, the title of today's message is Two by Two. Uh, we read three scriptures. We read from the book of Amos 3, verse 3. How can two walk together unless they're in agreement? We read from the book of Mark 6, uh, verses 7 through to 13. And the scriptures tell us that Jesus called the disciples and he sent them two by two. And they healed and they cast out demons. The third scripture we read was from the book of Kings, 2 Kings 7, chapter 7, verses 1, through, chapter, verses 1 to 2. And the prophet Elisha says to, to the king and to the people that were in the audience there, he says to them, this time tomorrow, there's going to be a turnaround. And then some agreed, and then the captain refused to agree. And then he says, the prophet Elisha says to the captain, you will see it, but you will not taste it. The title of today's message, two by two, two by two. So the inspiration of today's message, you know, is that, you know, as a ministry, we've just turned to. And we're so excited, we're so excited that, you know, we're now two years old too. <laughs> and, 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 as, and, you know, last week we had Apostle, we called in the big guns, we had, we had dad, we had mom and dad, we had Apostle ADM preaching and, and, and mom also preaching. And, you know, they released words, they released certain things. And, you know, and, and after, during the course of the week, I was just also saying that, Lord, this is technically our first service after, you know, turning to <laughs> this is after office service after turning to give me the word that applies let me not speak out of my own understanding let me not speak what i think but give me the word that applies in such a season as this that were two and then i just heard the lord say two by two two by two someone can take it as as multiplication but it is what it is it's two by two but, you know, as I was preparing for the message, you know, I was just reflecting on the process of, you know, the things that happen when you're preparing for the message. And if you're preparing even as a man of God, you know, in Bible school, you know, I was talking with Pastor Ru. In Bible school, you're taught two, two main things, amongst many other things. You're, you're they're taught about something called homiletics. I don't know if Pastor Ru, you can type that. You are the Bible scholar, amen. I don't know if you can type homiletics. Homiletics. So in at Bible school, you're taught homiletics, and homiletics is the art of preaching. I know we have pastors here, you know, we have pastors, we have men of God, we have women of God watching, amen. So in Bible school, they're taught homiletics, which is the art of preaching. How do you preach? How do you articulate? How do you explain the word? How do you preach it? The second thing that they're taught at Bible school is exegesis. Exegesis. And exegesis is, is the science or the art of, of studying the Bible text. Studying text. I got a Bible scholar right here. You can write exegesis. Exegesis is the study of how to study, how to interpret, and how to analyze the text, the Bible. So, you know, pastors actually go through a formal training of these things. The other thing, there's hermeneutics. The other things that, you know, that you're trained in the pastoral training to prepare you to preach. And, you know, and, and as using those, those tools and stuff, I use those are the tools that we use in our preaching and we're teaching and we're sharing the word. But there's a certain system that I've developed over the years also to just, you know, make it more efficient, you know, for, for Sunday service preparation. And one of the things that I do is that I, I look at a whole chapter, you know, you look at that chapter. When I'm preparing for a message, I look at the whole chapter of a verse, of the key verses that we use for Sunday service. And the reason why I have to look in the whole chapter is because I don't want to take a word out of context. Context is very important in the scriptures. So, you know, you have to look at the whole passage. The whole chapter, what is God saying? And so sometimes during Sunday service, we may not be able to go through the whole chapters or else it will end up being a Bible reading. <laughs> but what we have to do now is we have to pick a certain section that is key to the message. But when I'm, when I'm doing my research and I'm preparing for the message, I have to go through the entire passage. I have to go through the entire passage to get the, the, con the context of the things that we're going to be sharing. But apart from the entire you know, passage, I've also come to see that in every passage of scripture, there's always a key verse, just one sentence. So you can have a passage, for example, that is a, a chapter, one of the longest chapters in the Bible. You can have up to 50 verses, 50 verses, a whole passage of 50 verses. But in all, those, in all those 50 verses, you can find that there's only one verse that is key to everything that is being explained. Everything that is being explained, one key verse. And, and, and so in the, in the scriptures we read in the book of Amos, we may not have read the whole chapter of Amos 3, chapter 3, which is one of the key scriptures today. But, but the key verse is 3.3, 3, Amos 3, verse 3. Other versions say, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? Other versions say, shall two walk together unless they are agreed? And maybe your version is saying, can two walk together unless they make an appointment 
of the make some arrangement. So that is the key verse. But now I take it a bit further. I begin to say, okay, God, so this is the key chapter for the Sunday service, okay? So this is the key verse, all right? But now what is the key word? What is the key word? What is the key word? And, and as I was looking at this scripture, I don't know, when you're watching, and as we read, and as we read the scripture together, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? Shall two walk together unless they are agreed? Can two walk together unless they agree? These are various versions of the scripture. And the first time I read the scripture, my eyes were, were, were taken to the word agreed. 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 Then I said, I think that's the key word. But, 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 but my spirit was not at peace. Then I said, okay, agreed is there, but, but I don't think that's the word. Those are, that's the word or those are the words. Then I said, maybe it's not agreed. Agreed may not be the word for, that is key to this verse. And then I went to the second part and then I said, okay, maybe it's, 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 it's together. Maybe it's together. Can two walk together? Shall two walk together? Maybe the key word is together. And then I was still not at ease. I said, nah, no, it's, it might, the key word might not be together. And then I went again and then I re the same verse. And then I said, okay, maybe the key word is the word, you know, you know walk, walk, walk. Is the key word walk. I don't know. I got past the rule in the house. I don't know which, which word that you thought that to you was key. I don't know as you're watching with me what, we, what the word that jumped out to you in Amos 3 verse 3. Shall two, how can two work together unless they agree? I don't know which word jumped out to you. But as I was preparing for the message, the strangest thing happened. I personally would have said, use the word agreed. And I would have gone to the word walk. Or I would have gone to the words together. But the Holy Spirit began to lead me to the first word. How? How? So my version in the book, um, in the Living Word Translation, the TLB version, it says, how can two walk together? Or maybe in your version, it's saying, shall two walk together? Or it's saying, can two walk together? It's that first word, that word can, that word shall, or that word how. And I noticed that that first word changes the entire sentence. Because that first word changes the formulation. I got my wife here, she's very good in teaching English. You know, one of the things that we noticed in Amos 3 verse 3 is that there is a question and there is an answer. And that is determined by the first word. The first word, in my version, the first word is how. How can two work together unless they are agreed? So that first word is the key to the whole sentence. Because it changes. The because if you remove the first word, then the, then the, the, the verse will just go as two will work together and, and, unless they are agreed. Or two, two can work together. Or two. But it changes. The meaning and it changes the whole grammar of the sentence because when you use the word shall when you use the word can when you use the word how you're making the sentence a question and the funny thing is that in that same sentence Amos 3 verse 3 you have the question and then you have the answer you have the question and then you have the answer but what the Lord began to say to me was that I am concerned with the first word the first word is the key for I how how can they shall they can they? The first word is key because God is concerned with the how. God is concerned with the hows of life. He's concerned with the hows. And so sometimes we may focus on them walking together and then being in agreement. But God is asking a question because he has the answer. He's asking a question and then he gives us the answer. But he wants you to think. He wants us to think. So he's asking, how can they? Because he's trying to, to allude, he's trying to imply that there is a cause. There are things that are happening behind the scenes. And I want you to understand. That's what Amos 3 verse 3 is, is teaching us. It's saying that don't just look at them walking together and being in a... There are things that are happening that I want you to understand. So the word how implies to each and everyone, to me, it applies to you, that there is a process happening behind the scenes. There is a cause behind the scenes. There are things that are happening behind the scenes. And God wants us to understand. God wants us to understand. And it began to make sense, brothers and sisters, because when you read in the book of Proverbs, the, the, the Solomon keeps talking about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But numerous times, he keeps saying understanding is more important than wisdom. Understanding. Seek understanding. Seek understanding. So God is more concerned with understanding than what is happening. Oh my gosh, oh my word, I'm already excited. God is concerned with the understanding. And so I began, as I was meditating on the scripture, I began to say to God, why are you concerned with understanding? 
And then I was reminded, I was reminded of, of the book in Mark 6, the scripture we read in the book of Mark 6. Mark 6 verse 52 says this. The, in 52, the later part of the scripture in the book of Mark chapter 6. Jesus comes walking on water. We looked at that a couple of weeks ago. But after he gets in the boat, the Bible says the disciples did not understand. <laughs> they did not understand about the feeding of the 5,000. So there are certain times when you read the Gospels that the Bible will say, this is happening. It talks about a different situation. But the Bible then says, they did not understand something that happened before. And the Lord was saying to me this Sunday, that for I, it's important that you understand. It's important that you understand. And I began to say, why is it important that you understand? And the Lord was saying to me, it's important that you understand how things work, how prayers are answered, how you get a breath, how you need to understand the how. Because if you understand the how, two things will happen. If you understand the how God works, two things can happen. The first thing that will happen is this. Number one, you will begin to understand that certain things are transferable. Certain things are transferable. Certain skills are transferable. I remember I was looking for a job at a certain company and they began to ask me about my, my, my work history. And then they say to me, and then, and then they say to me, you know, you will do well in this position because you did this position before. You worked in another position that was not, that did not have the same title. But the skills you applied in that position are transferable to this situation. Oh my gosh. So one of the things that happens, that happens to us as Christians is this. Because we don't understand how. Hey, we don't understand the way God answers prayers. God can answer your prayer in one situation. 24 hours later, you are crying again. And then you are crying not because God can't do it. You are crying because you don't understand. So when you read Mark 6 verse 52, Jesus says, come walking on water. He comes walking on water and then he gets in the boat and then he comes the storm and everything is at peace. And then the Bible says the disciples did not under, they did not understand. They did not understand. And I am reminded of people. I'm reminded of people that in your life, if you're a Christian, there are times that God has answered your prayer before. He has given you a job before. He has given you a breakthrough before. He has answered your prayer before. But because you did not understand, you did not understand the how. You did not understand the how. Now you're in a different kind of situation. And because it didn't take time to understand the how, you can't transfer. You can't transfer the skill. You can't transfer the wisdom. You can't transfer that the same God, <laughs> the same God who's given you a job before can give you another job today. The same God who gave you a husband can give you a child. The same God who gave you a child can give you finances. The same God who gave you the child, who gave you a husband, who gave you a marriage, who gave you a wedding, who gave you all these things can give you a The same <laughs> the same God. Because brothers and sisters, when you understand how faith works, you can begin to understand that faith, the principles of faith are transferable. Hey, the principles of faith are transferable. And sometimes as pastors, we're dealing with people that yesterday, yesterday God came through. Yesterday God blessed them. Yesterday God healed them. They see things that God did yesterday. And all of a sudden today, this lamps, it's like they have amnesia. Today they're forgotten. Today they're like, well, God, where are you? You've forgotten about me. You've forsaken me. And I was saying to God, why is it? How is it possible that the people you've healed yesterday, today they're doing this, today they're complaining, today they're whining, today, and the Lord began to say to me, it's because they don't understand the house. Hey, they don't understand the house. So that's why in the book of Amos, God is saying, I, it's not enough for me to tell you that two people can walk together and they can be they can be agreed, but I need you to understand that there is a how. There is a how. And if you understand the how, maybe I don't need to tell you that how can two people run together? How can two people, oh my gosh, how can two people begin to do other things? Because the problem is this, when you don't understand the house, you limit God to what you have seen. So when God, so God can bring you bread today. And then after he brings you bread, you say, God, I want you to bring me, to bring me tea. And God will need to bring you tea. And then you say, but God, I need you to bring me tomatoes. And then you need, you need you to bring tomatoes. And then you say, but God, and, but these principles are transferable. So God needs to give, wants you to understand so that he gives you keys. Because certain things have master keys. They have master keys. Say master key. Say master key. Master key. 
Master key, amen. There are certain things that are a master key. So whenever you see the word how, it's because God wants to give you a master key for something that you can transfer in a later stage. Something you can transfer in a different situation because the skills are transferable. Hey, hey, chill. Hey, hey. Oh, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. Because certain things are transferable. Because certain things are transferable. So if you're watching this broadcast and maybe you're believing for a job, if God has given you a job before, you should not be crying, you should not be whining, you should not be sad, you should not be throwing a, a pity party fit, you should not be emotional, because that same, <laughs> that same God. Now the question I'll ask you is this, how did he do it? How did he do it? How did he do it before? That's the question that I'm asking you. How did he do it before? Because the same way he showed up in your life before is the same way he's going to show up again. If God healed you before, the same way he healed you before is the same way he's going to heal you again. If God delivered you yesterday, this, because these things are trans. Oh, they're transferable. They're transferable. So sometimes a person can come to you, Pastor, Pastor Ru, pray for me, I want a job. After they get the job, they come back and then they say, Pastor Ru, they, they, they hate me at my workplace. They want to fire me. My boss hates me. My, this person hates me. They want to fire But how can that same God who gave you that job then allow you to get fired? Oh my God. Then they have to come for prayer again. Please pray for me. Pray for me because they want to fire me. Now they're scared to be fired. Then we pray again. You will not get fired. You will not get fired in Jesus' name. Then they go back. Their money is no longer enough. They come back. Now I want a raise. I want a raise. It's not enough anymore. How can God give me that job? And Nettie knows the money is not enough. And then we have to pray again. Father, increase the salary. May the increment come. Because the people are failing to understand that, that faith is transferable. That this thing, this thing, breakthroughs are transferable. So at some point, if you have a certain level of breakthrough, at some point before, you should not be acting up today. You should not be like a baby throwing up. No wing. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't just be throwing a pity party and saying, Hey, yeah, where is my food guy crying like a baby or the time ah, these things are transferable in the same God so that's why the Bible says this <laughs> the God is the same yesterday today and tomorrow hey <laughs> yesterday God is the same because God is trying to tell us a principle that the same things that I did for you yesterday I can do it for you today and I can do for you tomorrow but because we don't take time looking at the first word how how can they? Shall they? Can they? And you don't take time to understand how these things work. And so now when we are faced with a, with, a, with a situation that is just a little bit different, we don't know how to transfer the faith. So some of the issues that you're experiencing in your life, they're just issues of transferring your faith. I am hope I'm with somebody. And then, and then this leads me to the second part. So after you learn, you understand how God works, how breakthroughs work, and how prayers are answered, the first thing that you will learn is that faith is transferable. Miracles are transferable. Breakthroughs are transferable. They are transferable. So now that you are facing a different... So that's why you will notice this. The Bible says this. When David is facing Goliath, David has to say to Goliath, the same God who helped me to kill the bear, the same God who helped me to kill the he was transferring the things that God did with him before, that God helped me to kill a lion before, God helped me to kill, so I haven't faced you before Goliath, but I'm going to transfer my Oh, I feel like there's a transference breakthrough. I feel like there's a transference breakthrough. I feel like there's a transference breakthrough. And I'm coming to somebody and I'm saying, the same God who brought you out of a certain country, the same God who brought you out of Malawi, the same God who brought you out of Zimbabwe, the same God who brought you out of Nigeria, the same God who brought you out of where you were coming from, who has brought you this far, he's the same God who can take you further. He's the same God who can take you to tomorrow. Even though you have never faced Goliath, before, but you have faced the lion. Even though you've never faced Goliath before, you have faced the bear. Even though you've never faced Goliath before, you have faced the wolf. Even though you've never faced this kind of situation before, there are other situations that you have faced and you have overcome and you have believed and God has come through. And if it is done before, he can do it. 
Oh, he can do it again. Oh, he can do it again. I'm excited. I'm excited about how far God has taken me. I'm excited that sometime in my life I was broke and now I'm making some money. I'm excited that I was single, but now I'm married. I'm excited that we were married and we didn't have kids, but now we have some kids. I'm excited that we were married and kids we didn't have jobs. But now we have jobs. I'm excited that we had married, we had kids, we had jobs, we didn't have businesses. But now we have businesses. Ha! I'm excited that we, oh my gosh, it can go on. Then it can go on. And the same thing applies with you. The same thing applies with you. The same thing applies with you. That same God. That same God. This situation, maybe it is not coming in that way. You've never experienced that Goliath before. But the other Goliath, they've killed. They just had a different name. 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 So I know how to deal with those things because I have dealt with those things before. Oh, in the name of Jesus, may God release that transferable grace, that transferable grace that you're going to begin to be an overcomer because you're going to transfer it. You're going to transfer it. When you face a situation, you're going to remember the other things you've come through. You're going to remember that faith is a transferable skill, that miracles are transferable, that breakthroughs are transferable. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's transferable. Oh, it's transferable. Oh, it's transferable. Oh, it's tra oh, I'm excited. It's transferable. If it's, tra it's transferable, it's transferable. Because you understand. And so one of the things that I've said to my wife, I've said to my wife that, you know what? When you understand, number one and number two, you begin to, you're able to, to transfer. You're able to transfer skills. You're able to transfer principles. You're able to transfer and you're able to begin to do certain things. Now you're matured in the things of God. Now you're matured. Now you're grown up because now you know how things work. Now you know that the food is in the fridge so you don't need to call mommy and dad every time you're hungry. Now you know that the money comes from clients and the money comes from getting a job so you don't need to ask for pocket money. Now you know how things work. So I've always said to Pastor that no, just be, there are certain people who un, don't understand how things work. And those people don't have the right to teach. Because number two, when you understand, you are released with the grace to teach. Only people who understand things, who understand principles, who understand how God works, have the key to teach. And sometimes in life, we know there are certain people that, that they can become rich. But they don't know how to become rich. There are certain people that are married, but they don't know how to become married. There are some people that there are some people that have things, but they've never taken the time out to sit down and say, But how did I do it? How did I do it? And some there are some people that don't have a right to teach. They don't have a right to speak. They don't have a right because some people, like what the scripture is saying, there are some people that are walking together, but they don't know how. They're working together. <laughs> they don't know the how. So it's only people that, people that know the hows that have the right to teach. So if you ever want to be a teacher, if you ever want to be a preacher, you need to take down and sit down and take some notes and begin to say, God, teach me the hows of life. Teach me the hows of life. Because if you don't know the hows, you don't have a right to stand in front of anyone to say anything. Because chances are you might have a happy marriage, but you don't know how to get a happy marriage. You might have kids, but you don't know how to get the kids. You might, you might have a business, but you don't know how to run a business. You might have, you might be a millionaire, but you don't know how to become a millionaire because you can do things, but sometimes you don't even understand. You can do things without understanding. That's what Amos 3 is telling us, that there are people that are working together, but they don't know that. So God is saying, I don't just I, must, I don't want you to just walk. I want you to understand. And then I want you to be able to teach because you are a prophet. You are a prophet. You are a prophet. So some of us have taken time to understand the house. We have taken time to understand the house. And I am preaching to you today. And I am saying to you, if you are going to be a man of God, and if you're going to be a woman of God, you need to begin to sit down, get a notebook, and begin to say, God, teach me the house. How did I get here? How did I get here? So that I can be able to teach other people how to get here. How can I? How can I? Oh, I pray that may God begin to release the grace of teaching on you. May God release the grace of teaching on you. That you will begin to understand how you got to be where you are. You didn't get to where you are by luck. You get to where you are by decisions. You got to where you are by actions. By now, may God give you the grace to understand so that you can be able to teach others. You may be able to teach others. So, so now afterwards I began, I began to, to meditate. Now this is, the first part is the how. Now, I'm going, the second part of the message is the working together. 
the working together. I'm calling this part the working together, part two of the message. So now I begin to analyze that. So, so, so for God to say, shall two work together? Can two work together? How can they work together? It means there are things that are happening behind the scenes for people to work together. And then he just says, unless they are agreed. <laughs> he just says, oh, it's powerful. And he just says, he summarizes. God says, unless they are agreed. He summarizes it. But there are certain things that are happening for two people to work together. So I begin to do research, brothers and sisters, on the science of two people working together. So I begin, I begin to do a Google search. Then I said, if God is saying how, it means that maybe there is a science. It means maybe that thing. And then when I typed in the, we type on your, if you type after the message, the science of two people working together, or the physics of two people working together. There are things that begin to come up, and then I begin to realize there are actually principles and philosophies about how people work together. There are, there's, a, there's actually something called the physics of working together. And one of the things that they talk about, they talk about something called step synchronization. Step synchronization. In other words, when two people are working together, they have to synchronize their steps. And then I begin to say, oh my gosh, people have done researches about how can two people work together. But as Christians, when we read that scripture, we just take it as it is. We don't apply a scientific approach. We don't really take time to think about it. But scientists have actually done research about people working too. And there are, there are books on this. There are messages. There are lessons on this. There is a physics there are theories about how people walk together. And then I begin to say, oh my gosh, I wonder how many other things that are in the Bible that scientists are using, but we as Christians, we just browse through. We just scroll through. And other people are looking and they're saying, hey, wait a minute. There's something about this. Let's do more research about this. Wait a minute. Let's look at this more in-depthly. Wait a minute. So brothers and sisters, I began to, to look at those things. And then I began to say, God, what, what are the things that happen? And then the Lord said to me, when I say agreed, there are five things that the best people need to agree on. Because of time, we will not go through all of them. We're going to go through the main three. The first thing that they need to agree on is that they're going to be together. Proximity. The second thing is time. But the third thing that they need to agree on, the third thing that they need to agree on, that is very important for me to explain, they need to agree on the way they're going to use. If two people are going to work together, they are going somewhere, so they need to agree on the route they're going to use. Because for us to work together, we have to be on the same path. We have to be on the same way. We have to be on the same road. And this is some of the things. So, I, so the Lord began to say to me, that applies to me and you, Farai. Then I began to say, what do you mean? Then he began to say to me, that applies with your relationship with God. If you are going to work together with God, you have to walk on the same path. You have to walk on the same road. So that's, this is why Jesus, brothers and sisters, says, I am the I am the way. I am the way. I am the way. In other words, there are places that you want to go to. But if you don't understand, there are many ways to go where you want to go. There are many ways to success. There are many ways to happiness. There are many ways to marriages. There are many ways to parenting. There are many ways to get to the places and the things that you want to do. There are many ways. But the first thing that we need to agree on, we need to agree on the way. <laughs> we need to agree on the way that we're going to use. If we're going to work together, we need to agree on the way. So the Lord sent me to say to you, if me and you, if you and God are going to walk together, you and God need to agree on the way you are going to use. Because not every way is going to allow for you and God to walk. Oh my gosh. You, not every way is going to allow for you and God to walk together. There are many. There is the way of the world. There is the ways of man. There are many ways. That's why in the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, there is a way that seems right to him there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is death so if you're going to walk with god you need to know the way you're going to walk with him oh i heard the lord say if you're going to walk with me if you are going to walk with me there's a way we need to walk and you need to be okay with the way i'm going to choose for us to walk and god is saying to someone who's watching this there's a way he has for you
There is a way He has for you. There is a road that God has for you. There is a path that God, that God has for you. And if you're going to agree to walk with God, you have to agree on using the same GPS. You have to be on the same GPS. You are not just together in proximity. You are not just together in terms of time, but you are on the same road. You're on the same road. And I heard the Lord say, this is the same thing that happens. So when God is writing this scripture in the book of Amos 3, verse 3, he is talking to the Israelites. He is saying to the Israelites, when you, read the whole, when you read the whole chapter, he is saying, Israel, I want to walk with you. You are my favorite. I love you. You are my kids. You are my family. But if we are going to walk together, we need to agree on the... Oh, we need to agree on the way we're going to use May God begin to reveal to you the way he wants you to walk with him. May God begin to reveal to you the way, the path, the road that he has, that you and him can walk together. But because you are not going to walk together in every path. There are certain paths that you're going to walk alone. <laughs> there are certain roads that you can walk alone. May you begin to agree with God to walk on the same path. And I've realized, Pastor Ru, that's the same thing in marriage. That's the same thing in marriages. If you are a couple and you're watching this, the only way you can be together is if you agree on the you agree on the way you're going to use. You agree on the way you're going to use. As a couple, there are many ways to doing things. There are many ways. There are many ways. There are many ways that you can use to get a child if you're not having a child. There's many ways you can use to get jobs if maybe you're not getting jobs. There are many ways you can use. And sometimes as couples, we lose each other because we are not agreeing on the we're not agreeing on the way we're going to use. If we're going to go somewhere as families, we need to agree on the ways we're going to use. If you have siblings and you're watching this, and as a family, you have family meetings, and the things you want to do as a family, if you guys don't agree on the way you're going to use, you are not going to work together. Because number one direction, number one way, we need to agree on the way that we're going to use. And even right now as a church, as a church, as we are turned to, as we have turned to, I heard the Lord say, Farai, if you guys are going to walk together, you guys need to agree on the... As a church, we need to agree on the way we're going to use. If we're going to do the things God wants us to do, we need to first agree on the way. Brothers and sisters, may we agree on the way. I don't want to take so much time on the, on the, on the agree on the way. The second thing that we need to agree on, we need to agree on the speed. We need to agree on the speed that we're going to move. We need to agree on the speed we're going to move. We need to agree on the speed we're going to move. Because for two people to work together, there's something that the physics, in physics, they say step synchronization. It means this, when you are working together, it is not just natural for you to just walk at the same pace. But what happens is that one person always has to adjust to the pace of the other person. Oh, did you get that? When you're working with someone, when you're working with someone, you are always walking at different paces or at different speeds. But what always happens is that if you're going to walk together, one person is going to need to adjust to the speed of the other person so that you can walk together. So when God is saying to the Israelites, he's saying to these guys, I want us to walk together. The second thing that he's saying to them is that we need to agree on the speed or the pace that we're going to move. Oh my God, this is powerful. We need to agree on the speed and the pace. Hey, hey, hey. And, and, and I'm reminded of Moses. I am reminded of Moses. Because the Bible says this, Moses was supposed to lead the Israelites into the promised land. But there is something that he does. He, he strikes the stone instead of speaking to the stone. And right there and then, God says, you will not enter the promised land because you have anger issues. There are certain places, there are certain things that God is saying, if we are going to work together, we need to move at a certain speed. We need to move at a certain pace. And there are certain things that you should not be dealing with at this stage. If we are going to work together, there are things that you should not, that should not be an issue. There are certain things we should not even talk about. But like Moses, if we do not walk in the same speed that we're walking with, with God, that God wants us to walk with, we can lose. We can lose pace. And so there are times, brothers and sisters, that sometimes someone is ahead and someone is left behind because people are walking at different speeds. 
Oh my gosh, I am praying for people that are watching this. May you move in the speed of God. May you move in God's speed. 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 May you keep up with the pace of the Holy Spirit that you are right with the place where God wants you to be. You are not dealing with old issues. You're not dealing with old issues. Issues that God is saying, by now you're not supposed to be dealing with these issues. There are things in my relationship with God that God sometimes says to me, Farai, at this point, this is not a conversation. This is not a conversation. I am not going to sit here in heaven and tolerate you making this prayer. I am not going to allow. I'm always saying to Pastor Ru, God, there's no time for me to be throwing pity parties. There's no time for that. There's not, it is speaking of what's happening around me. It is, he says to me, you are an apostle. Pack it up, get up, do something. And as some of you, you are watching this broadcast, God is saying, we cannot be moving together if you are keeping moving at that pace. Change your pace. Change your pace. We cannot always be teaching you the same things. We cannot always be saying to you about the same things. If you have anger issues, deal with your anger issues. If you have jealousy issues, deal with your jealousy issues. If you have faith issues, deal with your faith issues. We cannot be talking the same things day in, day out. You need to change your pace. If you're going to move together, and the same thing applies in families. The same thing applies in marriages. You have a couple, you have a husband, and you have a wife, and they are moving at a different pace. And sometimes people end up divorcing because they were moving at a different pace. 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 So some of the marriage problem, marriage problems we have is, is because one spouse is fasting, one spouse is praying, one spouse is pushing, the other one is just chilling, the other one is just taking it easy. So one person is moving at a certain pace and the other one is slowing down. And so later on, there's a gap that's developing. And then they begin to wonder what is happening because people are moving at a different pace. They're moving at a different pace. And the Lord sent me to say to you, be careful of the pace that you're moving in. Be careful of your speed. Be careful of your speed because certain things in life are not waiting for you to catch up. The same things apply to us in church. The church is going to move at a certain speed. The church is going to move at a certain pace. So we are going to say, brothers and sisters, right now is the time for midnight prayers. If you don't do midnight prayers, it's up to you. But it's also true for my neighbor. We're going to say, we're going to call on a fast. We're going to call on sacrifices. We're going to call on giving. Just because you may not be in agreement with what you're saying does not mean we're all waiting for you. The church is now two years and we're pushing to go further. There's a certain speed that the church is moving. And we don't want you to be left behind. So we are saying, buckle up, buckle up, buckle up. Brace yourself and change your speed. Move with us lest you get left behind. Hey, let's get real today. So the, the first thing that they agree on, they need to agree on the direction, they need to agree on the road, on the way they're going to use. The second thing that we need to agree on is that we need to agree on the pace. At which speed are we going to move? And the third thing that they need to agree on, we need to agree on the destination. <laughs> we need to agree on the destination. Because brothers and sisters, we can be walking together side by side. And we can be on the same road. We can be using the same pace. But our destinations are different. <laughs> our destinations are different. Our destinations are different. Our destinations are different. Same people, same road, same path, walking together. But the, dif but the difference is their destinations. Where is your destination? What is your destination point? I'm reminded of the disciples with Jesus on the mountain, on the, on the, on the, on the chapter of the transfiguration. The Bible says, the Peter begins to say to the, to, 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 to the disciples, say to Jesus, let's pitch tents here. We have seen Elijah. We have seen Moses. We have seen you. We are okay. Never mind everyone else. We have arrived. This is the destination. This is the mountaintop experience. It's also just Shika. Where is your destination? So God is calling me to say to you, he's asking me to say, if we are going to walk together, brothers and sisters, you need to be clear on the destination. Is your destination getting a job? The moment you're walking with God, and then maybe you just get a job. Are you okay? Are you going to say, now I'm okay, I've arrived? Is your destination starting a business? What is your destination? And even as couples, and even as families, we need to sit down and we need to say, what is the destination? Is our destination a situation in which hobby is working? And wife is working. 
It's our destination when we, we have a house. The moment we build a house, oh my gosh, we have arrived. It's our destination when we have a business. When we have a business, oh my gosh, we have arrived. It's, what is our destination? So we need to come in agreement regarding the destinations of our lives. We need to be honest with ourselves to say, sweetie, what is your destination? How do we know we have arrived? Because we can continue walking. And another person's destination is another person's labor. <laughs> another person's destination is another person's labor. Somebody else is just saying, you know what? I am still going, but I'm just taking a nap. And another person is saying, but we have arrived. So as a ministry, if we're going to walk together, we need to agree on the destination. It's our destination when we have a building. It's our destination when we have Kingdom Nation TV. It's our, what is the destination? <laughs> what is the destination? So number one, you need to, to agree with God. What is your destination when you're walking with God? What is your destination? When, how do you know where you have arrived? And where is the arrival? Where is it? Number two, if you are married and you are together with your, with, your, with your wife or with your husband, begin to sit down after the service and begin to say, Honey, where is our destination? Where is our destination? How do we know we have arrived as a couple? How do we know? And right now as a church, we're having this conversation. How do we know we have arrived? Where is the destination? So these are the things that God is talking about when he says, How can two walk together unless they are agreed? So it seems like it's just one simple sentence. It seems like it's just one simple verse. Amos 3 verse 3. How can they walk together unless they are agreed? Shall they walk together unless they are agreed? Can they walk together unless they are agreed? But in that simple sentence, there are things behind the scenes that are being discussed or being addressed. That number one, we need to agree that we're working together. We're in a relationship. Number two, we need to set out a day and a time of an appointment. Number three, we need to agree on the way we're going to use. Number four, we need to agree on the speed or the pace we're going to use. And number five, we need to agree on the destination. And those are the things that, brothers and sisters, that even as we're celebrating two years in ministry, I want to come in agreement with you. I want to come in agreement with you regarding your place of destination. As your pastor, I want to know, I want to take you as far as to the place where you will say, Apostle, I have arrived. <laughs> because I don't want them to then say, to think that you have not arrived when you have arrived. And then begin to say, but there is more. And then you say, no, Apostle, I have arrived. What is your arrival? Tell me your arrival. Say, Pastor Ru, Apostle, my arrival is when I have the job. I am done. I'm okay. And then we will come in agreement with you until you have the job. So some people, your arrival is when you have a marriage. When you want to have a wedding and you tell us, uh, this is my wedding day. Apostle, I have arrived. Nashika. So I'm praying that may we come in agreement regarding your arrival. So this is the backdrop, brothers and sisters, between Amos 3.3 3 and the book of Mark 6. That when now Jesus is saying to his disciples and he's sending them out two by two. <laughs> he sends them out. So now in the second scripture we read, in the first scripture we read is Amos 3 verse 3. Jesus is talking about agreeing. And we talked about the five things that people need to agree on. And so now in, in the book of Mark 6, when Jesus is sending out the disciples and he's sending them two by two, and then he says to them, I'm sending you guys two by two to go to villages. He doesn't tell them the villages. To, send, to, to go as, as in, 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 uh, to, to go to towns, to go to houses. He doesn't tell them the, the, the specific destinations. He doesn't tell them. And then he says to them that when you go there, I want you to cast out demons. I want you to heal the sick. I want you to deliver the oppressed. I want you to minister to the people. To minister to the people. When you go there, because he wants to do to, that. To, to, so the disciples thought that they are going to see the power of agreement when they are casting out demons. But the test, the test, brothers and sisters, was that their power of agreement was going to be tested on the, on the road, on the way. Because there are certain things that they have to agree on before they get to the house. Then those, that's where the power of agreement comes in. So when Jesus is saying, where two or three gather, I am there to come in agreement. Where we have the power of agreement. The agreement when Jesus sends out the disciples two by two is not when they are now in the house and they are casting out demons and they are healing the sick. The test of agreement is beginning when they are sent out that they need to agree. They need to agree on the 
road they're going to use. They need to agree on the on the on the what on the speed they're going to use. They need to agree on the destinations, and then they need to agree on the places on where. Oh my God! They, Jesus was testing their power of agreement, and we, sometimes in life we think that our power of agreement is tested when we are faced with challenges, when we are faced with situations. But our test of agreement is tested in our day-to-day -day walk. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! It's tested in our day-to-day -day walk. So the power of agreement was tested with the moment they were sent out. Not when they arrived. Not when they went to the town. No, it was tested on the way. <laughs> because he was testing how can two walk Oh, Bakate. He was testing. How came two walk together? How came two walk together? So he sends them two by two. He sends them two by two because he is testing the principle in the book of Amos 3, verse 3. How came two walk? <laughs> oh my word. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He is testing the principle of Amos and he is testing it in the book of Mark and he is showing them that by now. So when they come back and then they say, you know what? We did this. We cast out demons. We cast out this. We healed the sick. He is not surprised because for them to come back, it means they are already in a. <laughs> so one of our challenges, one of our challenges as couples, one of our challenges as families, one of our challenges in our relationship with God is that because we have not agreed to walk together, we are not walking on the same road, we are not walking on the same speed, we are not walking at the same destination, and then now when a challenge comes, we want the power of agreement, but we are not on the same road, we are not at the same space, we are not... Because the power of agreement is tested in the walking, not in the destination. It's tested in the walking, not when the challenges come. It's tested in the walking. It's tested in the walking together. It's tested in the walking together. It's tested in the walking together. So some of you, you're going through things and God is saying it's a part of our walking together. It's a part of our it's a part of our walking together. You are walking to go with God. And God is taking you on the same route. God is changing your pace. God is changing your direction. God is changing your destination. He is changing these things. Because he say, because the next time a challenge comes, if we are together, we will deal with it. Because the power of agreement is not when the challenge comes. The power of agreement is not when there is a situation that needs to us to come together in agreement. The power of agreement is tested in our day-to-day -day lives. Hey! Hey, 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 I'm speaking to some couple. The power of agreement is that is now in your day-to-day -day life. I'm speaking to every Christian. If you're a Christian, the power of agreement with God is tested in your day-to-day -day walk with Him. Not when there's challenges. Not when now you need a job. and Not when now you have a crisis. and Not when now you have situations. and Not when now. Not when there are challenges. Not when there's opposition. Not when there's a fight. It's in your day-to-day -day walk. But if you can understand the power of walking together, and if you agree to walk with him, certain walls will begin to fall. Certain solutions will begin to come. Certain things will begin to change because you're already in agreement. So now you don't need to go back and begin to pray. You don't need to fast. You just speak to the situation. And then you begin to say, in Jesus' name, <laughs> because I am walking with Jesus, because I am walking with him, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. But sometimes we have to call on fast. Some Sometimes we have to call on these programs because we are not working together. So now we have to call on this fast and all these prayers and all these things because now we're trying to go back to working with him. Because now we're confronted with the situation. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So the Lord came to, to me and he was saying to me, Farai, as a church, you guys need to walk together because if you are going to do exploits, you need to walk together. If you are going to go places, you need to walk together. Don't wait for there to be a financial crisis for begin to say, guys, let's wait. Let's begin to pray for financial breakthroughs. No, we need financial breakthroughs right now. We need you to have jobs right now. We need you to have businesses right now. We need you to prosper today so that when the time comes that the church has bills, the money is already there. We need you to have happy marriages so that we don't need to deal with, with counseling. We need you to be successful as an individual so that we don't need to be casting out demons and be dealing with situations. We need, it's in our day-to-day -day work. So what I heard the Lord say is that say to your people, in this time, we're just celebrating the second anniversary, in the second anniversary season, let's walk together. Let's walk together. Let's walk together so that sometimes we don't need to deal with certain challenges. We don't need to deal with certain unnecessary things. In the name of Jesus, let's walk together so that we can begin to unleash
power of agreement. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. May you agree. May you agree. Let's begin to wrap, round up. Let's round up. Let's round up. Let's round up. So this is where now we have the story in the book of Kings. Let's round up in the part three, in the last part of the message. Agreement versus disagreement. So in the story of the book of two Kings, verse chapter chapter seven, verses one and two, the prophet releases a word. The, the prophet releases a word. There is a crisis. The prophet releases a word. And then he says in the book of Kings, he says, to people, he says, this time tomorrow, things are going to turn around, things are going to change, things are going to do this. Tomorrow, this time, things are going to change. And then other people were quiet. Then the Bible says, the captain, in the book of 2 Kings 7, verse 1, 2, verse 1 and 2, the captain that says to the prophet, even if God, even if God opens the windows of heaven, this will not happen. In other words, he did not agree with the word of God. But what I found challenging was not just his disagreement. What, I found, what, what touched me was what the prophet said. Hey, what touched me was what the prophet said. The prophet said, because you have not agreed, because you have not agreed with the prophetic word, because you have not agreed with the prophetic declaration, because you have not agreed, you will see it, but you will not. You will see it, but you will not. You will see it. But you will not eat of it. You will see it, but you will not partake of it. You will see it, but you will not benefit from it. Because he has not agreed. So brothers and sisters, last night I was in prayer, praying for this service. And then the Lord said something to me. He said, Farai, ask the people how many times they've gone to churches and they have not come in agreement with the prophecies and the revelations and the declarations that were made. And they have seen it, <laughs> but they have not. They have seen it, but they have not eaten it. There are people, brothers and sisters, you are watching this podcast. You have seen certain men of God when they were starting ministries. You saw them while starting the ministries. And you were there when prophecies were released. And right now, you are one of those who were saying, when that pastor started, I knew him. You have seen it, but you have not eaten it. Because when those declarations were being re released, you were there, but you were not agreeing. <laughs> you were not agreeing. And because you did not agree, you can see. So the judgment of God is that when, when, when there's a revelation, when there's a prophecy that is released, to show that God is God, God will allow you to see it. And then he will say, you will not eat of it. So right now, there are people that are watching this broadcast. You have seen men of God after men of God. You've seen them start churches. You've seen them start ministries. You've seen other people start businesses. You've seen them receive words. And you've seen them start from zero to being heroes. And today you sit there and then you say, when that state church, when that church started, I was there. When that thing started, I was there. I was there when the words were released. And now you are seeing it. But you're not eating of it. You are not eating of it. And there are things that right now, some, each and every one of you who's watching, at some point in your life, there are prophecies that have been released for the whole church. There are prophecies that have been released for a whole congregation. There are prophecies that have been released. Last week on Sunday, ADM released prophecies about our ministry. It released prophecies about me as a man of God. It released prophecies about Pastor Ru. It released prophecies about Kingdom Nation as a church. And some of you have been watching and you've been saying, ah, and the Lord is saying, you will see it. But you will not partake of it because you have not agreed. And some of you, we release prophecies. You will release prophecies about you. We release prophecies. Me and Pastor Lou were coming in agreement day in and day out. And we are saying, you are going to be a millionaire. And then you say, Inini. Inini. Me. Eunice. Eunice. Me. How can I be a millionaire? I don't even have a degree. I don't even have an education. You are disagreeing with the word of God. You are disagreeing. And sometimes we disagree. We disagree in our hearts. We disagree with what God is saying. Because when the prophecy is being released, when the declaration is... Sometimes if you don't agree, I like what happens in the book of Kings, chapter 7. Other people were quiet. The king was quiet. All the other audience were quiet. But the captain, the captain spoke. The silence of other people does not mean they believed. It just meant they said, you know what? I am not sure, but I will be quiet. There are times, brothers and sisters, that if you don't believe, if you don't agree, just be quiet. 
Just shut up. Don't be the one to always say, ah, not for me. Ah, it can happen with them, not for me. Ah, it's because right there, you are disagreeing. And you are invoking the judgment in 2 Kings 7 verse 2. That you will see, but you will not eat. So sometimes, so right now we're going to release a lot of declarations. Right now we're going to pray for you. Right now I want us to come in agreement. And my, 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 what I'm saying to you is this. Don't speak negative words. Don't speak negative words about what I'm going to declare over you, over the church. Don't speak negative words over you. Don't just say, oh me, I can't do it. How can this happen? How in Zimbabwe? How in the middle of this crisis? How in my age? Some of you, we say you're going to get married. And then you say, how? How can I get married? I am ugly. Some of you, you say we're going to get married. And then you say, how can I get married? I am too old. Some of you, you say you're going to have kids. And then you say, how can I have kids? I'm too old. Some of you, you say you're going to start a business. And then you say, how can I start a business in the middle of this economy? Just be quiet and agree. Just be quiet and agree. Because if you don't disagree, you will see it. And you will not eat of it. So I'm going to begin to release declarations in our second year of anniversary. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus... We as a church as kingdom nations, we decide to come in agreement. We invoke the clause of agreement. And we say that all of us are entrepreneurs. All of us are millionaires. All of us are going to be successful. We pray for every person who is single, who is believing for a marriage. They are going to get married. We believe for every couple that are married and they're believing for kids. Maybe they're believing for sons. You are going to have sons. You are going to have daughters. We believe for every family that has been struggling, that has been suffering, that God is going to show up in your lives. God is going to deliver you. God is going to move in your lives. God is going to release blessings. God is going to prosper you. God is going to show up. We pray. We, pray, we come in agreement as a ministry regarding every one of us. Every one of us. All of us are going to prosper. All of us are going to succeed. All of us are going to be healthy. All of us are going to be used of God. All of us are going to be used of God. All of us have miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles. All of us, each and every one of us, we come in agreement that each and every one of us is a leader. None of us is a follower. We are all leaders. Leaders in our own right. We are all influencers. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come in agreement. We come in agreement. We come in agreement for the grace of entrepreneurship. We come in agreement for the grace for businesses. We come in agreement for the grace for finances. We call money and all of its friends, all of its different names and all of its friends. Money is not a cold rand. Money is not a cold US dollars. Money is not a cold pounds. Money is not a cold. All of these currencies, New Zealand currency, Australian currency, whatever currency, we call money, money in all of its names. We call money in all of its forms. We call forth properties. We are property owners. We are building owners. All of these things, we call them. We say we're going to build cities. We call we're going to build nations. We pray we're going to be world changers. We pray we're going to be transformers. We pray that God is going to use us in our generation like he's never used any other church before. We are a different church. We are king and we are priests and all of us are great all of us are powerful all of us each and every one of us and we invoke the power of agreement that as we are in agreement and none of us is in disagreement we are all going to see it we are all going to see it and we are all going to eat of it. We are all going to see it and we are all going to eat of it. And we pray that as a church, in the next 12 months, we are going to have multiple branches. We are going to have multiple branches. Our church is going international. We call for the branches in Zimbabwe. We call for the branches in Joburg. We call for the branches in New Zealand. In we call for branches in America. We call for branches in Europe. We call for we call branches in all over the world. Because if you can do it with Ezekiel Guti, you can do it with us. If you can do it with ADM, you can do it with us. If you can do it with Judo Bismarck, you can do it with us. If you can do it with all these great men, with pa with Pastor Tom Dishow, you can do it. If you can do it, if you can do it with mom and dad, Apostle Duncan Manyonda, Pastor Sheila Manyonda, if you can do it with them, you can do it with us so we invoke the power of agreement that we refuse to disagree with the word of god we refuse to disagree with the word of god we agree and in agreement we say this ministry is a million dollar ministry we call forth kingdom nation tv we call forth in this generation we're going to have a broadcast we're going to come up with sitcoms we're going to have a studio we're going to come up with kingdom nation studios if tyler perry can do it 
We can do it. We call for the grace to design clothes, the grace to come up with perfumes, everything. We call for that. Some of us are going to, we call the grace to, to, to build hospitals. We call for the grace to build supermarkets. We call for the grace to start businesses. We call for the grace to start banks. We call for the grace to start to build schools. We call for the grace that we are going to become a nation and we are going to become to begin to do all these things. In the mighty name of Jesus, things that have never been done before, things that have never been done by a church before, things that have never existed in the world. If it, if it happened in the book of Genesis, in Genesis, the people came together and they did something, they were building something. And you said, because they have one language and one mind, nothing shall be impossible with them. We invoke the power of agreement that we, nothing is going to be impossible with us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So everyone who's watching this, as we've invoked the power of agreement, let's agree on these things. And as you agree on these things, don't say negative things. Don't say. Don't say it. If you don't have anything good to say, shut up. Be quiet. So that you, so that you can see it and you can eat of it. So that you can see it and you can eat of it. One of the greatest challenges that I've seen in ministry and in life is that sometimes you see people that, you know, that see it. They are there. You, they, they, you, they, receive, they hear the prophecy. Then they see the prophecy come to pass. And then they, 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 they see, they talk about the men of God on TV. Oh, you know, when, when Apostle Farai was starting off, we were there. Do you know, he used to do it on Facebook. And we were there, we were there when he started. Don't be that person. I refuse for you to be that person. But may we all be those people that we are going to move together. We are going to move together in agreement. And we are all going to go places. I believe that it is possible that a whole church can be blessed. A whole church can prosper. A whole church can be healthy. A whole church. All of us. Not some of us. Not a few. All of us. But if we are going to get there, we all need to agree. In the mighty name of Jesus. So as we are turning two, and this is our first service after turning two years, Two is the number of agreement. Two is the number of relationship. I'm calling every one of you to say, let's be in agreement. Let's be in agreement. Our job is to make sure we do the best we can for your life to transform. So that in the next 12 months, we can have a meeting. When we're turning three, we need to have a, sitting, a meeting and we need to say, where are we now? There needs to be change in the ministry. There needs to be growth in the ministry. And there needs to be growth in your life. There needs to be change in your life. Because we're working together. Thank you for tuning in. Two by two. Two by two. Two by two. That's what the Lord is saying. And he's saying that the things I'm going to be doing in your ministry, the things that I'm going to be doing in your lives, believe, agree, pursue. If you can type that, Pastor Ru. Believe, agree, pursue. So two by two is like a, it's like a, it's like a mathematics. It's like mathematics. It's like multiplication. Two times two. Because we are going to be moving under the grace of multiplication. We're not going to be moving consecutively. One, two, three, four. We're going to be that church that's going to move from one hundred thousand. So sometimes when we're making decisions that don't make sense, if you don't understand, just believe and be quiet. But if you choose to believe, believe and agree and release a word of confession. I'm encouraging each and every one of you. Be a part of this. Be a part of the things God is saying. Be a part of the things God is doing. Be a part of it. Because I want you. Me and Pastor Rush is here. We want you to eat of it. In Jesus' name, thank you for taking your time. We know this was a blessing. And we're excited about the things. We're excited about where we've come from as a ministry. And we're excited where we're going. We're more excited about where we're going. And we're more excited about the things God is going to do in your lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We never want to close without giving two opportunities. Number one. We never give, we want to close without giving anyone an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. All these things we're talking about, you need to be a Christian. You need to be a born again Christian for them to make sense. And if you're not a Christian, send a message after this, send a message to the church group after this, and then we'll, Pastor Ru will phone you, then we'll lead you into the, the prayer, to the repentance prayer. And the second, we never want to close without giving you an opportunity to give. These things cost money. <laughs> we need equipment to be broadcast, we need this. These things cost money. If you have your tithe with you, if you're offering it to you, I, we just received a message. Someone said, I'm, I'm sending my offering. 
Today, I just want to pray for everyone with your tithes, with your offerings this month. And I know people have their tithes and their offerings. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We pray that as people are preparing their offerings and people are preparing their tithes, we, we agree for financial breakthrough. We agree for prosperity. We agree for health. We agree that the devourer is going to be rebuked. We agree that their finances are blessed, their wallets are blessed, their bank accounts are blessed. We agree that you're going to open their minds and going to give them ideas for new business ventures. We agree that each, that each and every one of them is going to, they're going to start off with a job. They're going to have a business. They're going to have business partners and they're going to be business investors. In the mighty name of Jesus, we agree for four streams of income. For each and every one of them. And we agree for multiplication. We agree for increase. We agree for wisdom to know what to do with money. How to work money. How to understand how money works. And how to make the most of money. We agree in the mighty name of Jesus. With all the tithers and all the offering givers. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you everyone for tuning in the broadcast. We're so excited about the things God is doing once again. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye.